afternoon, Happy Crafters. How are you all? Thank you so much for joining me, Tony Derrick, live in my studio. It has been a lovely day. I hope you've had a great day, whatever you've been doing today. In today's studio, we're going to be using a whole host of things. Uh, one in particular, the free member's gift. I hope you've all managed to get your gift. If you are struggling or you know, you're know you wondering what, what, is it, what it is all about, all you need to do is either speak on the Eureka fan page to our design team or contact us here direct. We will talk you through exactly what you need to do. The two things you need to do are subscribe to our YouTube channel and subscribe to our newsletter. That's it. But like I said, we are available if you need us. So if you are watching over on YouTube, don't forget to click the subscribe button. This allows you to see it, all the up and coming events that we're doing and all the tuition and the one minute 30 videos that we do, the quick spit, sped up ones, you can also watch them as well. If you're watching on Facebook, don't forget to pop a comment below. I always do try and pick a winner to receive one of our lovely studio makes. So in today's demonstrations, I'm just going to show you how to do some different things today, maybe a variation on a little bit of stamping and a variation on one layer cards. So in today's studio, I'm just going to show you what we will be using today. So in today's studio, we will be using our lovely members gift, which is this one here. And this is the one that most of you have had in the post already and have been making some fabulous makes with. And it's lovely to see them <coughs> and thank you for posting them because it is lovely to see other people encouraging other people to get the stamps out and have a play. So we're going to be using this one. We're also going to be using some of our earlier products. We're going to be using our artistic mounts today. So we're going to be using a square and the coordinating die maybe maybe not but they do two come together if you do like them but predominantly we're going to be using the stamped square and we're going to be using the rectangle from the artistic mount collection as well don't forget if you do like any of the products you can pop onto our um, website and you can go to the search engine pop in there fbl facebook live and it brings up any products that we've used here today in show it saves you having to hunt around to try and find them Okay, so let's crack on with our first demonstration, shall we? Let's do what you've all come to see. So let me just tidy my station. It's been a little bit chaotic today and we've been putting lots of things together for you all. So I have done some work before air uh, because sometimes it's really difficult to get a full demonstration in using some of the techniques that we use. We can't really do them in 20 minutes. So I've done a little bit of the work pre-coming to air to help um, you get the most out of what you're going to use. So we're going to use our lovely free members gift and I'm just going to show you a little bit of a technique with this one. So I am going to use my Eureka and we're going to do a little bit of masking. So I'll pop the Eureka down. I just have this piece of white cardstock here. Now I will be honest, before I came to air, I did do a little bit of work on this one. But then what happened was I picked up a pencil thinking it was a watercolour pencil and it wasn't. It was just a wax based pencil and I sort of ruined the project so you can imagine can't you so I am just going to do it from scratch live on air with you today so and I know some people do prefer that anyway so I'm going to use the square one which I've just shown you which is this one here so we're going to create a little bit of a mount on our card so I'm just going to place the square which is going to create a little window in there like so I'm just going to hold my artwork in place with the magnets and we're just going to heat emboss this one because I am heat embossing we are going to use our anti-static bag get rid of any moisture on the card so we get a lovely finish on there now these artistic mounts are fabulous for creating like windows on cards making it look like your work has been mounted so you know when you see a frame um, around some artwork that's the appearance you will get with this stamp. So don't forget as well, ladies and gents, I do appreciate that, you know, um, not everybody can afford to buy all the time. We do encourage you to have a look through your stash because you will have things in your, in your stash, I'm absolutely certain of it, to maybe try the techniques. You know, you don't have to have exactly what we've got. You might already have something. But obviously, if you do like the things, which is lovely, you know where to go if you need them. 
so I've just put that on there like so and what we're going to do is we're going to do it in a lovely gold so it looks like a gold mount around our work so I'm just going to get this piece of paper here I'm going to use a gold one just going to cover the whole area where we've used the stamp let the paper catch it there we go and as you can see because we've used the anti-static bag we've got one little bit there and one bit there but other than that look at that how clean that is so it always keeps your artwork lovely so I do encourage you to invest in an anti-static bag if you can So we just heat set this one. So if you are using embossing powders, you must always heat set your work. Uh, if you don't heat set it, it will just drop off. So I'm getting my gun as hot as possible. The less time on the card, the less lumps and bumps you'll get in your card. So as soon as the gun is hot, pop it on, the powder should change immediately. And as soon as the powder changes, I'll follow it with my gun. Don't waft your gun around, as soon as the powder changes, just follow it. then what you end up with is a beautiful gold frame so you can maybe mask the center and stamp outside stamp outside uh, mask the outside stamp on the inside there's so much scope with these frames they are beautiful I know a lot of you have already got them and that's why I've revisited them so we can get them back out and have a play so I'm just going to get rid of that stamp so here I have my mask well loved mask she says it's all curly here so I'm just going to pop the square mask now if you have the dies I just cut this out with the die um, that goes around here so it's going to create a lovely mask on there make sure it's as straight as you possibly can I think I'm due to make another mask to be honest so so this is one of those um, sticky self adhesive sheets you know so it's always a good idea to do a lovely mask so I'm just going to hold that in place like so just there for now just going to make sure it comes all the way down what we'll do is we'll just hold that in place with the other magnet like so so I've created myself a lovely little mask you can see I've already been busy with it with the stamp detail already on there so I'm just going to grab the stamp and we'll just move this one up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get as much detail as I can on the lower part of this card so we'll get the big elements on there if we can and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp it in um, a memento ink pad and this is a grey one now there's London Fog which works beautifully as well this is the grey flannel one but I'm just using these ones because I did plan on just using pencils um, like I said I picked up the wrong pencil so but I'm still going to go with it because I thought, I thought the colour looked well so I'm just light taps all over the bottom of this stamp the lower part now greys are grey ink pads are a great alternative should you not like the harshness of a black ink pad you know and you're trying to draw your eye to something else grey ink pads are fabulous for that too so we have the detail across the bottom there I'm just going to go for it one more time make sure it picks up all that lovely detail there we go so I'm just going to take the magnet off here like so and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn my artwork around so I can get an image on this part here so again I'm just going to hold that in place I'm just going to close the door and see where the work is going to land that looks okay so I'm just going to go ahead and get some pattern on the top half of that golden frame I 
and I'm just going to do it one more time. Now you could really go to town with this, do it down the sides of both sides of the golden square, but I'm just going um, above and below on this one. Like so. So I just get rid of this stamp for now. Turn that work the right way. And then when you peel your mask back, you get like the window, the golden window, which looks like a shop bought card really. Quite quite a classic looking card, which is fabulous. So I do encourage you to get the mask in. Right, so I'm just going to quickly dry this off so I don't get a mucky paw print on there because it's inevitable with me. So, just blast it off. So what we're going to do is, I'm in the centre of this one, we're going to use the... Uh, members gift that we sent to Create and Craft and I know a lot of you have already got this one so it's just a, these are large sentiments as you can see from the pack here so I'm just going to pick one that's fitting for the square so we could pop celebrate you in there that works perfectly shine bright works perfectly so I think we'll go for celebrate you on this one and I think we'll go for the same gold embossing powder that we've used in the center I'm just going to hold this in place Make sure it's straight. And then again, I am going to anti-static the centre. In fact, I'm going to anti-static it all because the powder will drop from the square down and I don't want it to stick to that ink anywhere if it's not 100% dry. So I'm just using the sticky ink pad. So if you did get this stamp and you did actually get the coordinating die, you could pad this one and raise it up if you wanted to. So there's so many things that you could do different to what I'm doing. I'm here just to make you get your stuff out. It's up to you how you do it, how you use it. Um, but I do like to see your makes. So there you have the big celebrate you in the centre there. So again, we will heat set this one. So as soon as my gun's hot, So you can see there how fabulous that looks. So let's just set this aside then and get this card constructed. I don't know how my card has managed to get so mucky. I have been busy in the studio all day today though simply because we have new launches coming and I've been doing our videos for you all for the QR codes. So don't forget, if you have got products with QR codes on the back, there is always going to be some videos there for you to get you going and inspire you to get your products out once you've bought them. Just sticking that one on there. And then we'll do the same with this one. So if you haven't tried masking before, it's a great alternative to uh, making your cards 3D all the time. Um, the flat cards can look 3D without um, they're actually being lifted with pads or tape or anything. So I do encourage you to give it a go. It's quite a classic look. 
and just wait till that's stuck down. There we go. Make sure it's straight. So I am going to colour this one and I will colour it before I take the picture and pop it on Facebook for you all. Let me just make sure. Um, and I did have one pre-coloured but I didn't like it. So you can imagine what happened. So I'm just pushing that down to ensure it's all stuck. Because we've used heat embossing it's gone quite bumpy. There we go. So it's nice and flat now. So there you go. So if you wanted to colour it in gold or anything like that you could do the same with that one if you wanted to. So before I move on to demonstration number two, I have done a little bit of the work on this one and I actually like this one, believe it or not. But I'm just going to talk you through how maybe you can create the appearance of dimension again, but really there is no dimension. So I'm just going to set this one aside. So I'm just going to put a block on that one to weight it down. Set it aside and put the blocks on. So I'll just tidy this station a little bit. Right, so here we are, look. <laughs> Ta-da! So basically, I heat embossed the lovely um, stamp. That's what I'm trying to think about, the stamp. And I just did it like sporadic all over this piece of card. I wasn't um, like trying to measure or anything. I stamped it there, I turned my card, I stamped it on the edge, stamped it at the bottom and stamped it on the side. But on this one, what I did was I did a blue background rather than just having the image coloured. I thought, wouldn't it be pretty to have the background coloured as well? So I did colour these with our colour essence um, for this one. Uh, but if you've bought the tubes, they would work. If you have the colour wheel, that would work. It's down to whatever you have in your stash. I'm sure it'll work, whatever you've got. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the lovely rectangles which is this one. So I'm just going to pick one of the dies within to, to basically cut out this centre here. Now we could go with that one. Let's just have a look. Let's just go down a tack two sizes. And they're fabulous these dies and it's the same in all the artistic mount collection. The um, nesting dies work for all your projects so just bear that in mind if you have bought them you can use them for other projects too so i think i'm going to go with this one so i'll just set this big one aside let me just see actually no nope. it is better to go big let's go big so i'm using the largest one from the rectangle artistic mount die collection which is this one so artistic mount rectangle that's the one i'm using for this demonstration but again you might have a rectangle die in your stash so I'm just going to get my plates what is it? I'm just going to pop my artwork on here and then I'm just going to get some low tack tape and I'm just going to hold it in place because I don't want it to cut wonky I'd like it to at least look straight that's the look we're going for anyway straight so so we'll go which is beautiful really because we've got the two lovely flowers which are just captured within that lovely rectangle there so we'll do put that one there that one there and we'll just run this through our machine now i'm using my cut and boss um you run these rectangles go through a snap so i'm sure you'll all have the appropriate die cutting machine what works for you but all of our dies work with all the die cutting machines on the market I hope you are enjoying today's live studio. I know there's a lot of new faces that have started to watch us here on a Monday and Wednesday and it's lovely to see you all. I hope you like the shows. Please let me know. We, are, we love feedback as well. So I'll just pop this rectangle out of here, look. Carefully take your tape off without tearing your card. There we go. So basically now our artwork is in two parts. So we have the centre and the exterior. So let's go and make a card, a lovely card. 
Right, whilst we are here, I will just cut the sentiment for our lovely centre of this card. So you will all probably know, I'll just grab it for you just for reference because I know a lot of you are new to the channel. This is the die that coordinates with the Create and Craft members gift and I'm going to use the happy birthday. If you didn't get the die and you only got the stamp that's okay, there is a stamp version of it as well in the stamp here. So you can use both, I'm just going to use the die for this demonstration. And it's quite big so I'm just going to show you here look. And it cuts beautifully as well so I'm just going to bob it on there on this piece of white cardstock. I have got one cut ahead of time but I just want to show you basically how lovely it die cuts as well. So it sits in the die like so. Now you can tap it on the counter. Always do blade face up. And then when you take it out, you get a beautiful happy birthday on there. So you could ink it up if you wanted to so it coordinates. You could do whatever you like, really. So I've already gone ahead of time and done a gold one see that there a gold one there and I've all already done a white one so I'm going to do a drop shadow whether the drop shadow is gold on there or alternative the white drop shadow I'm not sure yet we'll see when we come to construct our card which is going to look better so I'm just going to grab my guillotine and what we're going to do is this element here this center part here we're going to cut shorter and it'll come to fruition why I'm going to do that in a second. So I'm just going to pop it in the guillotine and I'm just going to take a little, about, I would say half a centimetre off the, sa the shorter side and then half a centimetre off the long side. Okay. And I've got a top folding note card and I've already gone ahead of time and popped some gold mirror card on there instead of glitter, I know. So my card is going to be a uh, landscape today, not portrait for a change. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop this on here like so. Can you see that there? So I'm going to stick this flat. Oh, I've already put my tape on, look. That's me being organised for a change. And I am going to tape it as well, so it doesn't move. Now, which is the right way up? This way, we'll go this way. So I'm just going to stick this, excuse the head, flat onto here like so. give it a chance to adhere and then because what's because we've cut those elements um, or should I say half a centimetre off each when you pop it on look what happens it looks like you've got a die cut inlay in there it looks absolutely fabulous and it's all flat there is no dimension so the bit that you take out of the centre if you just take a little half a mil uh, sorry half a centimetre off the bottom and half a centimetre off the side it looks like you've got a gold inlay can you see that there it's a great technique. I can't take credit for it though. I found this on social media. Um, a lovely lady had made a very similar card to this one. And I just thought, what a great idea for flat cards if you do like flat cards. So I can't even remember the lady's name, which is um, not very good of me. So I'm just going to stick this one as flat as well because I really do want it to look like it's been inlaid back into the card.
I'm just going to pop that on there like so, give it some weight. This one has glued flat now, so this one looks quite well as well now. Now if you go in there with a grey pencil, I think that will look like a very expensive card and I will colour it in some fashion for you all so you can get an idea. So I think that's fine. So we have our happy birthday in gold. So let's see where this is going. So I would probably not pop it in the centre, I would probably pop it lower because I hate things centralised. But it's down to preference really. So that's gold. Now you could pop a white one on top and create a gold drop shadow and I think that's where we're going to go with it. Or you could swap them around, pop the white on first, pop the gold on and give yourself a white drop shadow. But I'm going to go for the gold first and then the white on top. Now, because this is a de oop, because this is a detailed die, you will need um, a glue with a precision point. So have a look what you've got, which has got a detailed point on there. These will be back in stock soon. I know a lot of you um, use these all the time. So, or maybe pop it on the back of your hand some glue, but always make sure you do a skin test first. So I'm just popping a little bit of glue behind all the detail on there. So that should be fine. Okay. So I'm just going to go um, centralised with this one straight across the bottom there like so. And as soon as I've got it in a fashion where I think that looks absolutely fine, I get a block and I hold it in place with a block. I don't faff, I don't mess, I just let it get on with it and then pop a block on top. So the card that I'm using here is our top folding note cards. These are five and a half by seven. Um, top folding note card uh, so see what you've got in your stash I love the top folding note cards it's just my go to but you can create these yourself as well if you've got a 7x7 seven seven, you can chop it down and things like that so I'm just going to give that a second to adhere so whilst that's adhering I'm going to get the white one now you could leave that as is if you wanted to but I feel like the gold is getting a little bit lost so I'm just going to pop the same sentiment on the top just to give it a little bit of a lift. So I'm just going to basically go directly on top, just slightly off. So I'm happy that that's okay. I'm just going to leave that to do its absolute work. Now just bear in mind that when you are using your glues and things like that, if you touch the watercolour element of your work, on my Y here, there is a little bit of a bleed. Now don't worry about that. What will happen is when it's dry and it's stuck in place, you can use an eraser and it will just rub off. Try not to start picking at it and playing with it now while it's drying. Just let it take its course to dry then we'll go back in and remove it with an eraser, okay? It only takes a second to dry. So while that's doing that, I am just going to take some sparkly gems and I'm just going to pop some sparkles around. You know how much I like my sparkles. So I've got some here with varying sizes and I'm just going to pop them around. I'm not going to pop them in the centre of flowers though. These are going to be quite random. So I always try and work in threes, don't ask me why. So I've got three at the top there and I'm going to pop three at the base here. So there you can see you have a beautiful card 
which you know looks like it's got dimension but it has absolutely no dimension at all the card is seamlessly flat so if you take remember to take that half a centimeter off when you cut the center out it gives you this appearance now you could pop anything behind there black card silver sparkly card and it would give you exactly the same look so two completely different cards let me know which ones you like you're probably not going to like this one as much as this one because this one's not colored but it will be colored so let me know your thoughts on today's demonstrations um, we have used the lovely members gift now in about eight or nine studios and we have had a lot of one minute 30 videos as well so on wednesday we're going to chop it up and we're going to try some of our earlier products and try something a little bit different I know you've all enjoyed the members gift and we will still be using it we will still get it out but it's time to do something else so i'm going to leave you be i'm going to be back on wednesday at 4 p.m doing something different so whatever you're doing have a great day look after yourselves stay warm stay cozy and i'll see you all on wednesday take care bye